This is Twit. Elon is a master. There are a few people in our world today, Donald Trump's one of them, Elon Musk's another, who are masterful at grabbing the headline, right? At changing the conversation. Tesla stock starting to go down se severely. So he announces, oh, uh, we're going to uh, have a, a Tesla robo taxi August 8th. <laughs> and what happens to stock price? Boom. Will they have a robo taxi product on August 8th? Who knows? <laughs> That's not the important thing. This is the man who's been saying since 2015 that that self-driving cars are any day now. And he said in I think 5 years ago, yeah. every Tesla owner would be able to turn on this feature that would let other people rent your car when you're not using it and yeah. it would just drive them around. That never happened. I mean, the thing you should take away from this story is not that, oh, ro robo taxes are coming, but but rather that the street is desperate to believe <laughs> that, that Elon Musk and Tesla are still a good bet. Yeah. Mm. It's, yeah. I mean, this is the thing is I'd, I'd be looking askance at the street rather than uh, taking this story as, as, as factual, period. In 2016, Elon said, you'll be able to send one of our cars on a cross-country drive all by itself. <laughs> Why would you want to? I don't know, but you're good. Uh, they've been talking about this autonomous robo-taxi uh, that will turn its cars into level three automated vehicles, um, but it hasn't happened. So, you know. They've been talking. About they've been talking. It. He's good at that. Yeah, so very good at talking. About it. I feel like this is going to be the theme I keep hammering home during this episode, but when you talk about automatic taxis, what problem are you solving for here? Is it, oh, I don't want to talk to a cabbie. Oh, I don't want to talk to my Uber No, driver. the problem you're solving, yeah. uh -huh. certainly when it was Uber's idea, is yeah. the cost of a driver, right. a human driver. That's, ex that's the that's big cost. That's not a problem for things. the user. The thing is, is you have to persuade well, consumers that you want, that they want robo-taxis. Like, what problem are you solving for consumers where they're going to pick this? Have you ever this? ridden in one of those Waymos or... or Lifts yet, no. or cruises or whatever they were. No, Did like you, it, Harry, I, you have. I remember we talked about the, the, I've been in a cruise yeah. uh, when there were cruises in San Francisco. It's, I saw somebody this week, last week, um, say they prefer Waymos to Ubers or Lyfts in San Francisco because they don't have to talk to a driver. Well, yeah, I mean, if, if you're if you don't love talking to drivers, you yeah. might find the, like the privacy of it of a self-driving car to be appealing. He also claimed that the, the Waymos are better drivers than human drivers. Mm. They drive like grandmas, though, right? They're very... I, very okay. I want my grandma driving me places. That's really? what I want, because here's... The, That's because your grandma's 52. Well, and also, <laughs> I, I don't... That might be true. Um, but I also don't have... Uh, to be perfectly if blunt... If your grandma were my age, yeah. you might not want her to be driving. I don't car. have to worry about my grandma being a... Like, to, to believe that She's aliens careful. have probed her. Yeah, no, that, no, no. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that anti... You know, like, that uh, v vaccinations... That, like, I have been in, in so many different... I'm a sovereign citizen. Stop yeah. signs don't apply to me. Yeah, I've been in so many different yeah. Ubers where the person just starts telling me well, all that. these scary things yeah. that I'm like, you live on a different planet, which is cool, but now I'm in this vehicle. The thing is, though, you have like a number you can call or yeah. or you have a thing The the concern I have about I pop into this pod that takes me from point A to point B is if something goes wrong, who am I talking to? Well, like, you push a button and then you're talking you're to the talking guy to the who's, actually who's actually driving the car. It, yeah. yeah. Right I mean, now. The, yeah. There's there's a level. And, and this is something where we saw it with self-checkout at stores where the minute it screws up, you've got to wait for somebody to come and fix it for you. Um when you remove people from the equation, you're yeah. kind of removing an incentive for consumers to get your product because they don't trust you to do right by See, them. See, mm. this is the difference between you and me. Uh -huh. And I think Micah and you. Uh -huh. You like people. Yeah. I find people really interesting. I'm not sure that's the same as long. That's the difference. Yeah. Well, I, see, I, Mike and I don't want to. Don't I do that like car. people, but my problem is I have trouble setting boundaries. Uh, and so the moment I get in that vehicle, I, I don't care how I feel. No. I'm going to talk to you if you want to talk to me, yeah. and I don't want to talk to you. But because you want to talk, I'm going to talk to you because I'm, I'm not good do you ever at being hop like in no. And, do you ever, so you've never hopped in and said, "Hey, I'm, I'd rather work right now." I can't do that. Oh, if Uber has a my button on the app, though. That's why. I know, and I won't use that button either because it seems mean. I mean, I once had a cab ride from. 
from the Savannah at Georgia Airport at midnight where the cabbie drove me through the Pine Barrens and talked about how easy it was to hide the bodies. See, that's what I'm saying. Obviously that's a wild. Sopranos fan, actually. That's where they... <laughs> and I remember, yeah, right. like, writing down, like, his number and putting it on a piece of paper and being like, maybe they'll find the number when they terrifying. find my body. Yeah, I'm like, terrifying. But my, my, my point is... You know, is if there I wanted to hide a body... Practicing your oh, tuck and roll. Like, oh, wow. my God. No, no. Like, this was also the... That I went for... Like, you, we that all... terrifying. Actually, no, the one... The, the, the ride back to the airport was more terrifying because the dude, like, turned down a second fare and then talked about the shotgun he had under his seat. And I was like, oh, I was not aware there were fire. You know, the robots won't talk about the shotgun under their seat. So they'll just have the the button that you can press to to, to <laughs> shoot things. No, but my, my point is they're with all of these like closed loop little automated systems, no, you, make a you good point. do kind of need some yeah. sort of in case of emergency to yeah. talk to human, press this button. Yes. Yeah. Or if you are not happy with this product, here's how you can get it redressed and it's not a customer service bot. And I think with a lot of these products, when you make the effort to cut human beings out of a workforce, you're also significantly degrading the quality of the product for the people using it. Mm. It's also interesting to see how quickly crews just kind of completely collapsed. No kidding. What just happened there? Well, yeah, the, starting with the fact that they had an ugly incident or two of, of the They the dragged cars a pedestrian under their car. Doing things them. like that. And then the entire company, I mean, it, it's not completely gone, but it's out of commission. They, they, and They don't uh, want to start uh, up again. The executives yeah. all left, and it's yeah. not entirely clear what's going to happen to this enormous investment on GM's part. Don't you think the real truth is that self-driving vehicles aren't really... We haven't figured level four or five dropping yeah, out. Yeah, it seems, it seems like um, largely self-driving vehicles can be a thing, and entirely self-driving vehicles is mm. 100 times harder. Yeah, Sam Abul Sam, you know, says that that, he doesn't see it at any He said on this show, it. there will never be a level five yeah. vehicle, at least not in the next 100 years. Yeah. Uh, and the other thing, and we were talking about this earlier on Ask the Tech Guys, we're learning more and more about AI, is there is human involvement. There was a lot of human involvement <coughs> in crews. Uh, Amazon problem. Go and Go. Oh, oh that, well, let's I talk about that. Actually, I just had a great interview about that that I did <laughs> okay. with uh, Cisco's Javed Khan at Enterprise Connect, um, uh, which will be going up on No Jitter shortly. We talked about how Cisco believes that the foundation of great generative AI comes with great transcripts, and I said, "So how'd you how'd you get that going? How how how'd that technology happen?" And he's like, "Well, we had an army of human beings transcribing oh everything until wow. we could get to the point where we could train the AI to do it, like." They relied on human beings because the technology is just not there yet to be able to train an AI to correctly transcribe something without people doing the first steps. We learned from uh, documents submitted to uh, NHTSA and the Department of Motor Vehicles that a lot of crews in Waymo vehicles had takeovers, frequent takeovers, the human drivers back at the office would... You know the the car would say, what do I do here? I have, I have no idea what to do. And the human would take over. Hey, thank you for watching this little snippet from our big show, The News Roundtable, This Week in Tech. I'm Leo Laporte. Each week we cover the week's tech news, in-depth analysis, but it's also fun and engaging. You'll find it at twit.tv along with all of our shows. And if you want more, just hit the subscribe button and uh, we'll be sure to bring you a lot more great content. Thanks for listening. <laughs>